Hello. So today I'm going to talk about The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. A horror thriller that leans probably a little bit more into the thriller than the horror, but nevertheless keeps those creepy undertones throughout. It's an odd mystery box novel where we are constantly questioning the twists and turns of our narrators throughout. I'm going to keep my review spoiler free, but this is a mystery book, so there might be some things that I say that you would consider spoilers. As always, when reading a book like this, it is best to go into it knowing nothing at all. If I was to explain my journey through this novel, through sounds and facial expressions alone, it might go a little something like this, right? Okay. Really? Whoa. Oh, shit. What? Oh, okay. Okay. Really? Like, really? All right. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. And I think that tells you all you need to know, so I'm going to leave the review there. Only joking. So this novel is told from the perspective of three characters. So we have Ted, an overweight man in his early 30s who lives in a rundown house at the end of Needless Street. He was once the suspect in the disappearance of a small girl, but his house was searched and nothing was found. Ted is written in a way that makes you feel like he's a little mentally unstable. He has all these sort of eccentricities and sort of odd things that he does that makes you think throughout that he is not quite well. He is not of sound mind. A little bit kind of like Norman Bates from Psycho, although not aesthetically the same at all. We then have Dee. Now, Dee is the older sister of the girl who's disappeared and she just can't let it go. What has happened has completely ruined her life, it's ruined her family's life. So 10 years later, she decides to buy a house on Needless Street so she can start her own investigation into Ted, because Ted is the one suspect who she has never believed and who she has never trusted. We then have Olivia. Now, Olivia is a religious homosexual cat. She is Ted's cat. That's right. We have a perspective in this book told from Ted's cat, who doesn't particularly get on with his owner and who is in love with a cat that wanders around the outside of the house. This is a really, really odd entry into the kind of cast of characters and you'll start this book going, what? <laughs> Why have we got the perspective of a cat? But as the novel unfolds and the layers start peeling back, you understand the importance of having that perspective in this novel. The book is packed with misdirections and the questions you have as a reader just keep building and building and building as it progresses. Structurally simple, but dense with clues and little complexities and sentences that upon reflection really start to build and add towards where this novel is heading. My prediction on the twist, because obviously with a novel like this, I know you're supposed to just sort of read it and enjoy it and go on a journey, but I can't. I don't know if other readers are like me, but I think if a, a novel in any way presents a mystery to me with lots of different clues and things that I'm having to figure out. I can't switch my brain off from trying to figure out those things. I actually think maybe most readers are like me in that we will always be playing that game and questioning what's happening. I guessed in the wheelhouse one of the twists in this book, but there are in fact at the end like three different twists, maybe you might consider even more, that sort of all mount together in this kind of complex thing. And I guessed in the sort of wheelhouse as one, but I can tell you right now, I didn't really guess it. I didn't guess it. I think most readers might be able to guess within the wheelhouse of where this is heading, but I will tell you this, the way that it's structured, the way that it builds, it deliberately is making it hard for you to really zone in on what the thing is. The prose is really simple but effective. It keeps the reader engaged and it keeps you turning the page. I would say that this is somewhat of a page turner. And the characters are all very well rounded. Their motivations, the way they live their lives, their personalities really do come across on the page. However, I did find myself wanting more from the perspective of D. She was well-rounded. We get a good kind of bit of backstory into her, what is motivating her in this moment. But I felt like things were left a little bit kind of loose in that area. And I would have liked just a little bit more time with her. My one complaint about this novel is that it leans a little more heavily into the thriller aspects than it does the horror aspects. And as it was sold to me as a horror thriller, I was just, I wanted a little bit more of the horror throughout. There are moments where it dabbles in the horror. It kind of starts to push things a little bit. And I started to get a real kind of that creepy feeling when you read that line and it just affects you, you know, that kind of thing. It starts to push it in that area. And I was like, oh, 
Now we're really going to start ratcheting up the horror elements in this novel. But it didn't quite do that. It didn't push it far enough. And I think if you are a fan of horror, the horror elements in this won't go far enough. Maybe if you're more of a thriller reader and you never read any horror, this might disturb you quite a lot. But for anyone who is well seasoned in reading horror, I don't think it goes far enough. I'm not going to lie, when the mystery, the kind of that final twist happens and it was revealed, I was a little sort of underwhelmed. I felt like, well, I don't quite know what to say here without giving anything away, so I'm not going to even describe in the area of it because I think it would ruin it, but I was just a bit like, oh really? But then the novel does something really interesting. It keeps going. It explores that twist, that reveal, further. And that saved it for me. That saved the ending of this book. And I strongly recommend reading the afterword, in which the author talks about some of the research she did into the themes of the novel, which actually opened up a lot of research for me. I found myself reading articles and watching YouTube videos just to kind of get a deeper understanding of the thing that it is. So yeah, uh, so I might say to this, you might get to the twist and go, really? That's really? Oh, okay. But keep going because it will unpack it a little bit. It will give you a bit more context. And I, yeah, I enjoyed it for that. So to sum things up, I'm going to give this book 3.5 stars out of five. I thought it was very good. It does what it sets out to do extremely well. Perhaps a little more for thriller fans than it is horror fans, but nevertheless, I think Katrina Ward does an incredible job at keeping those creepy undertones layered in throughout, which is not easy to do. And there you go, that was my review on The Last House on Needless Street. Have you read this book? What did you think about it? Please let me know in the comments below. If you've liked this, please hit the old thumbs up or subscribe and all that jazz, and I will see you all on the next one.